right, beautiful players, what is up? Shandemir here, and we are checking out streamers who ruin their lives in seconds. I'm super excited. I hope it's not heartbreaking, but I love live streaming. I think Twitch and everything is so interesting, so neat. YouTube's live streaming, super cool. I really miss Microsoft's old one, Mixer. I love that one. I thought that one was really fun and cool, but I love the like randomness there. You never know what's going to happen during a live stream and it's like intoxicating. It's fantastic. Whether you're watching or you're streaming, it's such a cool experience. But let's check out what how these streamers ruined their lives. Their whole life? I guess we'll find out. Let's go. The streaming world is marking its place on becoming one of the most polarizing spaces in the entertainment industry. We all have our favorite streamers, and if we don't catch them live, well, surely they have a YouTube channel where they post their clips surely and they do. they're up to. Even though it seems like the easiest job in the world, I mean, who wouldn't want to react to some clips, play video games, grow a community, all while getting paid? Well, the success stories that we see are only the top percent. Some streamers just couldn't fake it till you make it, and ended up ruining their entire lives. We've spoken about streamers' careers being ruined before, but today- this guy looks familiar. Here below that, welcome to streamers who ruin their lives in seconds. Let's see Hitochi what happened. Yuki, aka Smash God XXX. Real name Hitoshi Smash Yuki, God. had a career as a streamer and did what your regular streamer would do. You know, fire up the cameras, talk about random things, engage with his audience, and stay entertaining. Things were actually going well for him. His just chatting style and IRL vlogs garnered him about 11,000 subscribers on Twitch, where he would. I feel like IRL streaming is so dangerous because if someone just decides to like flash it, you're done. <laughs> occasionally feature his girlfriend Jess. One day in March of 2021, Smash God and his girlfriend were live and they were just doing the usual. Chilling, he's vaping, and Jess is on her phone scrolling and typing. But then they start arguing and suddenly things take a very wild turn. See, he wanted to get Jess out of the room because he wanted to talk just to the chat for a moment. Just get out. I'll Kicking her out? Jess, please, please, leave my stream and me alone, please. Why are you talking about me now? No, I'm not, but I need to talk to chat without you here. Just serious. If I want to keep fierce, I go out. Just please. Why are you acting like that? Like that, bro. Don't come at me like you know everything. I you don't know shit. Anything. Exactly. So keep your mouth shut. He persuades oh. her to leave, saying, "Yo, get out of here for a second. I need to talk to the chat just without you." Just, just get out. I'll open the door for you. Please, please leave my stream and me alone. Now, it seems Jess didn't want to leave because she just sits there ignoring him. He gets annoyed and presses on, even saying, bring me my beer. My beer is right there in the living room, actually. And pausing there for just a moment, that's a really gross thing. I feel like to say during an argument, almost has the vibe of like, women belong in the kitchen. Go get me my beer. Go get me my insert food item here. Just has those vibes. Yeah, Jess, yucky. Maybe realizing this response. I'm not your fucking maid. Now, this is when things turn even nastier because Smash God then stands up, turns the camera away from both of them and we can hear uh, a loud slap in the background no the dude seeming back to his girlfriend live on stream it happens within just a few seconds but those seconds were enough to get him in big trouble which he clearly didn't anticipate at the time the stream cut off and his sister took the camera but the duo returned after a while they try to act like nothing happened 99 percent sure she was being forced to say it was okay however the chat wasn't buying it jess attempted to downplay the situation but people still got riled up it got worse from there as he attempted that's really awful that's so sad like what a terrible situation to be in. I don't I don't know. That's sad. I know that when it comes to like abuse and relationships like that, like you get stuck in this like continuous mix of like it's getting better and it's worse and it's getting better and it's worse. and I, I know I know they're trapped and it sucks. I hope she gets some help. I do. Shifting the blame to her. He can be heard saying, obviously, me and my girls here together, all good and shit. You caused this. It's it's kind of your fault. You can't say it's mine. I just try to chill. Obviously, me and my girls over here together, all good and shit. But it's too much. Like, stop making up the stories. It's just it's so annoying. So don't lie. Can you just don't lie? Easier said than done, huh? Yeah, it is. You caused this. Dang. Dang. Get off her. I can't say it's mine. I just try to chill. Classic manipulation tactic. Yeah, the good no old doubt. Deflect. The dude allegedly inflicted harm on his partner and goes ahead and blames her for it. And people saw right through that and decided to give him a piece of their minds. On this YouTube video that has been viewed over 2.7 million times, Ooh. you can see comments like, if he's bold enough to act like this in front of his fans, 
Then imagine what happens when he's yeah, off Yeah, no stream. kidding. 314 made my blood boil. The fact that he blames this whole situation on her is awful. Anyway, Smash God's free fall doesn't stop there. He actually doubled what? down. Facing backlash from Reddit and Twitter, he decided to scare people off. First, he tried to get his chat to downvote this Reddit post that captured the entire situation. Then, in a classic internet fail, he tried to send a cease and desist letter to anyone who talked about the situation. He got roasted for the letter's authenticity in return. After all that, he got banned from Twitch and tried Woo! appealing, but I believe he never got accepted back. For most of his fans, which I'm gonna assume they're not fans anymore, that stream is the last time they ever heard from Smash God. Looking Dang. up Smash God on Google or YouTube leads to that event and that event only. I couldn't find his social media links, though those are probably just taken down as well, but this is what he's gonna be known for for the rest of yeah. his life. Yeah. Good riddance. Stefan? Yeah, I'm really glad that he ended up getting banned. That sucks. That is so brutal. I feel so bad for 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 her. I feel bad, you know, I know, like, you know, I feel bad for him for not knowing that that is wrong. Like, he just, he thought it was fine. He took the camera away from it and hit her. Like, that's crazy to be like, this is fine. No. Nuts. Stefan McCullough, aka Vote Saxon 7. Picture this. Stefan is a normal streamer. He puts in the work, you know, as great streamers do. He's a gamer and he loves streaming GTA. I like then, his hat. In August of 2022, things are actually still going great. And Steve, we're gonna call him Steve now, even officially brings a girl into his life, Natalie McNally. So he's doing his streaming thing. He has his girlfriend. And to make it even better, they have a baby on the way. Natalie, who at the time was pregnant with Steve's child and their parents knew about it. Now, I wish the story's ending was that they had a beautiful child and and lived happily ever after, but sadly, that's not the case. No. A few weeks later, things turned really ugly. On the 18th of December, Natalie lost her life in a very cruel way. Earlier that day, she had been at her parents' home in Lurgan, Northern Ireland, hanging out with them, watching the World Cup finals. She then left and arrived at her home in Silverwood, Lurgan, at 7 p.m. as per CCTV footage. At 8.52 p.m. that same night, the CCTV captures a man arriving at the same address and leaving at 9.30 p.m. It would later turn out that this is the time frame within which Natalie, who had been 15 weeks pregnant, was fatally stabbed. Now you're probably wow. wondering where Steve features in the story. Well, he was up to some very suspicious stuff. First, just before Natalie left her parents' home, Steve texted her that he would be live streaming GTA from 6 p.m. and probably through the night. He had planned that live stream in advance and even promoted it on his Twitter with a custom-made poster, which read festive steamy goodness live. So he was live streaming while his girlfriend got murdered. Absolutely not. This dude set up a pre-recorded six hour long GTA live stream. He used this to use as an alibi because he murdered murdered his pregnant girlfriend. What? Going back to the live stream, he pre-recorded it a week before and mentioned in there how he was having a difficulty with the chat, obviously so he wouldn't have to respond to the live chats, and said that he put away his phone. So, what are we doing tonight? Well, because... The That's some insane premeditation. Like, yeah, I'm just gonna pre-record it, get it rolling, make sure that I acknowledge I'm not gonna be talking to the chat, and that my phone's off. Nuts. Creating your own alibi. Poorly. This streaming software is kind of up the left. It means I can't check the live chat, which is a real shame. So by all means, talk amongst yourselves. I could use my phone to dip in every now and again and uh, check it, but I've decided that I kind of hate live streams where people just sit and read comments and go, oh my God, yes, ask me questions better. And also if I go on my phone for too long, I'll end up just scrolling through TikTok and the amount of time that I've lost scrolling through TikTok is unbelievable. So yeah, phones away. Can't look at the live chat for some bloody reason because if I do, it makes the whole thing freeze and OBS just screws up. Right, yeah, so I need to get my anxiety about whether or not the stream will crash just out of the way, otherwise it'll affect the whole bloody thing. But yes, if you have questions, comments, opinions, anything like that, tough. What, what I want this to be, right, is, do you know like when you used to watch Big Brother back in the day, when like E4 had like a, a live stream that ran like all night and it was just live footage from the house. It's kind of going to be like that. So, you know, like you can dip Why in, murder? you can dip out, that sort of thing. And meanwhile, I'm just going to be focusing on playing the game. All good? All good. The fake live stream titled Violent Night Christmas Live Gaming Stream went on for about six hours. Where was Steve from 6 p.m. to midnight? Well, committing the murder. 
but how was he caught? Thanks to extensive CCTV footage, detectives were able to piece together his movements. They saw a man, the man in the CCTV, walk down to a bus stop that's near Steve's home at around 7.09 p.m. disguised in a large hood, a snood, and gloves. The man takes a bus, pays cash, Nudge? but then drops some coins that he's unable to pick due to the thick gloves. He pulls the gloves off to reveal yellow-orange gloves underneath. He lights at Lurgan and the cameras capture him entering Natalie's residence. Neighbors heard a woman screaming during this time. He's again <sighs> leaving with a backpack, having changed clothing but still disguised. He then takes a taxi that drops him at a home address, his home address, where he comes in and comes back out to pay for the taxi. Then, minutes later, Steve's phone becomes active after being off for hours. Oh, and Natalie's German Shepherd never attacked or barked at this man, obviously because the dog already knew him. So, piecing it all together, coupled with intensive forensic evidence on the latex gloves, amongst other things, detectives were certain that the man in the CCTV was Steve. They believed that Steve killed Natalie because he found 33 WhatsApp messages with another male on her phone. There was a lot of other damning evidence evidence against him, including shared passwords, his access to her phone, browsing history, hints on the live stream, etc. But it was the discovery of the fake stream that prompted him to issue a pre-prepared statement. Were it not for the evidence, he might have actually walked away with it. And I think for a moment, he actually thought he got away with it. He went to her wake, he mourned with her family, and attended a rally oh. in her name for support of ending violence against women. Anyway, that was the last of Steve's streams, as he'll be going away for good as his sentencing is due this month. Wow. I haven't even I haven't heard about this guy. That's freaking crazy. So he sounds overbearing, right? It's saying that he had like shared passwords and everything with her and like was in her phone and accused her of talking to some guy. So that equals not living on Earth any lot. That's nuts. That's nuts. Joshua Block, aka so World sorry. of T-Shirts. Well-known influencer, World of T-Shirts, spends a lot of time live streaming and getting drunk. He's a tour guide and does so for the East Village and North Brooklyn areas. He does what most influencers do, entertain the masses on social media. He used to be pretty good at what he did and amass quite a fan base. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? National Coffee Day. His TikTok sits at 2.5 million followers and has over wow. 197 million likes. He also has an Instagram that has over 80,000 followers. People really seem to like this guy as his comments used to be full of support. So glad you're on vacation, Josh. You deserve the one. Josh, where is your next adventure? We love that you take us with you. No need for us to go on vacation now. Thanks. But while some think Josh is just living his best life, some people who have been his keen followers from back in the day insist that he's on a downward spiral, sort of like his career and life are headed for the pits. How so? Well, using this TikTok by no Noah Glenn Carter as an example, it seems there has been a massive shift in Josh's content, especially after his arrival in New York. While originally back in 2020, he would share clips of him reviewing coffee drinks and other likable stuff, since he got to New York City, he has posted thousands of videos of him wandering around and he's almost always drinking. And I'm not talking about coffee, like here, here, and here. Actually, fans notice the change in beverage choices and comments like, I really wonder how much Josh spends on alcohol a year. Why is he flexing his alcoholism? The guy knows he's done for, begin to appear in his videos. Also, allegedly, from this comment here, he used to live with his grandparents who wanted him to get treatment for alcoholism, but he refused and that's why he's been rolling solo for a while now. Again, allegedly. Actually, not completely hmm. solo, because he's been featuring a guy named Michael Quinn in a lot of his videos, and fans believe that Quinn is a bad influence. You can see in this clip, for example, Josh is discussing almost proudly with Quinn how he vomited all over the place when they were both at the bar. Very quickly, likable Josh turned into unpredictable Josh. Well, Rock discusses vomiting all over bars of the wet supply. You know beauty bar in the East Village? I puked all over the place and ran out before the bartender came back. I was with Gwyn when that happened. And I puked in my drink, and then I drank it. You saw that? I didn't see that. I did see that. That's what happened. I love you. Thanks. God bless you. Can I give you a hug? He's fucking... She just kissed me. She just, he just fucking kissed me. She just kissed me. What the fuck? I'm gonna fucking report her. She just fucking kissed. I'm gonna report her. She just kissed a stranger. And that brings us to his issues, or rather, controversies. In a video, this one here, Josh was filmed stomping on a fish, which he later claimed was dead and that he was set up. Apparently, the person was not supposed to film him doing it. Some people, of course, took offense to this despite his explanations. In that clip also, you can see that he's holding alcohol. And this relationship he has with alcohol seems to be Is a it? It looks like mishaps. coffee. For instance, how he has been accused of saying racial slurs. Anyway, based on the information going around, we might be witnessing a man losing his career and or life in a rather terrible way from what i've seen many people have reached i wonder so i watched like a documentary kind of thing like one of those long cut youtube videos about him i feel really bad like i i know 
he's an adult, right? He can make his own choices and everything. But I kind of feel like maybe someone should do like a wellness check on him. You know, there's so many eyes on him and I don't know, just get worried for him. He seems like a really nice, really great guy. I know the fish incident was disturbing, but it's like if you consider a fish to be more like a snail or like an ant, like it's like it kind of gets more understandable. Like I still don't like it, but I feel like if your like connection to a fish is nothing, it's like a dry leaf. Okay, like I get why that was fine to you. Like, but overall, he just he just seems nice, just wholesome, wholesome little human out to help but to no avail i hope this man gets the help he needs because yes he's me too something and drinking seems to be his coping mechanism mm -hmm. josh if you're seeing this please get help you seem to have a community that really cares about you they do joe ortega aka joe daddy underscore 505 next up is a guy who just like smash god left his camera on revealing his ugly side known to his fans as joe daddy 505 this guy did one of the dumbest things on camera and it cost him his entire career this happened what? back in 2016 when joe was heard assaulting his girlfriend live on stream in the extent extensive clip that goes on for about five minutes, we can hear the girlfriend screaming and crying, and there's a commotion that sounds like a physical altercation. I'm not going to share the clip here due to its Thank you. nature. It turns out, as reported by the Daily Mail, that Joe had both physically and sexually assaulted the woman. As more details were revealed, it became clear that he had been playing NBA 2K16 on his PlayStation 4, and after the stream ended, he forgot to turn off his audio, hence capturing the incident. It's unclear, however, what the argument was about, but I don't think that matters. For the most part, it sounds like the woman is trying to defend her herself even saying get off of me as joe keeps shouting profanities at her she can also be heard saying that she was going to call the police and joe's response is some vulgarity i'm not going to include in this video at some point the woman seems to shout you're being me and at no point does the argument calm down he was really bent on attacking her the whole time and i can't even count how many times he used the word whore i actually went through the transcribed version of the conversation on reddit and interestingly at one point he says what'd you say to your doctor bruh which i have no context for but then at some other point he accuses her of of having sex with a lot of people. Soon after, the internet found out, and what can I say? No one was a fan of this dude. Now, you would think that Joe was arrested, right? Well, wrong. The police, Valencia County deputies, said that they wouldn't take action because an audio recording isn't enough evidence. There has to be a victim who comes what? forward. Joe went online and made this post, trying to blame his actions on alcohol and his father recently passing away. However, ah, that's so bad passing away. However, no one would hear any of it. He got banned from Twitch, and I think realizing he was done for, he deleted his social media accounts. Twitch, Good. when asked about Joe's case by Engadget, said they do not comment on policy violations. They also clarified that if they suspect that a user on the platform is in imminent physical harm or harm to others, they would share such details with law enforcement, but only enough information to allow officers to ascertain the threats. Anyway, this was the last that Joe's fans ever heard of him, and it seemed his career and life were ruined due to this event. Good. Aqua Ladora. It's crazy, right? Like, it's like for me personally, I love making content. I think it's fun to share experiences with people and laugh about things and have a good time or explore different ideas and concepts and check stuff out together. Like, I love it. I think all of that's really, really fun and really, really cool. But I don't know a lot about the people themselves, right? Like, as I watch stuff or hang out or check in a, into a stream, I don't know anything about them. And I think that's true of like all of us, right? Like we just kind of see what is like the best foot forward, right? Hopefully. And that like, you don't really think about the demons or anything crazy they have going on in their lives. And yeah, there's some, I mean, people are just people, right? So you pull up a pool of people that all do this. You're going to have some, some stinkers, some rotten apples in there. So it sucks. It sucks. You, you, you want to hope the best for everybody and anyone making anything or wanting to reach out in the world, right? And it's sad, it's sad to see such terrible stuff. But I, again, it's like anything, any pool of anything. Like nurses, like a pool of nurses. There's gonna be like one, <laughs> it's like murderous. Like what, what? No, but it, yeah, it's just weird. I guess, yeah, just any any group of people, you'll you'll, the ones that are not so great show their colors eventually. So weird, it's weird to watch, weird to capture it all. Aqua Ladora. Picture this. You're sitting at your desk, watching a random Twitch stream where a host and three guests are discussing their lives and random experiences. The host asks, what's the worst thing you've ever done in your life? A seemingly harmless question, but one of the girls on the stream says that she killed a dog. On purpose. Let's talk about it. Now, on Raji Patel's stream over five years ago, when he hosted Simone Scott, popularly known as Aqua or Aqua Ladora, and two other gamer girls, Jenna and FT Bella, this caused a lot of commotion. In the stream, mm -hmm. Aqua's response to the question was that when she used to work as a veteran 
veterinary technician, she basically knowingly killed a person's dog. She specifically says, I once killed a person's dog on purpose. Raji and the other guests are stunned by the answer, and he seeks to clarify what she just said by asking, on purpose? She casually says, yeah, but no one knows cause, you know, professional. He pushes her to say it was an accident, but the words were already out and they would cause a massive stir in the gaming community. And I mean, just any community in general. What about you, Aqua? What's the worst thing that you've ever done to somebody? Cam up in the in the tiny yeah. jet, by the way, when you're in. Yeah, yeah. What's um, well, I used to I used to work as a veterinary technician, so I I once oh. killed a once oh. killed a dog. Oh, on purpose. And I, I, Glow I, on purpose? Yeah, but no one knew because you know. Oh my professional, god! But, um, oh no! Oh mean. my god! That's really bad. I'm gonna pretend like you didn't say that. Just say it was an accident. That is. <laughs> It was, a, it was a Oh accident. my god, Skojin, thank you for the $4.20 donation. Her justification? Well, she says that the owner was a really bad person. I think it's just weird how, like, she thinks she's so quirky saying it. She was so calm and like, yeah, that's, like, that's so cool. No? Yeah, that's a weird disconnect, right? To, like, think that that's an okay thing to share. And then to also, like, think that you're good for doing it. Like, she's protecting the dog. That's weird bro what the fuck was that are you just going what the fuck and apparently there was a second clip where she added more details polygon reports that she said the dog was pretty shitty too anyway the first video was shared on twitter by dion anderson a popular game dev and show host and it elicited lots of reactions the tweet got comments like i mean girl you gotta be a whole other kind of evil to just nonchalantly go on about some sort of legal investigation and punishment on this unruly wench the story also got to reddit and the comments were even harsher reggie also shared his thoughts on the encounter on twitter saying that he did not condone animal abuse and would not invite her to his platform again. In the tweet, he explained, I'm really upset about it and can't believe anybody would have the capacity to do something like that. Also, I think just to be sure he was on the right side of controversy, he said he would donate the $600 raised from the live stream to a nonprofit animal welfare organization called Best Friends. Aqua, on the other hand, said she was just trolling and thought the community would understand. So funny, no, dude. No, I don't you think. You really got no. it. Pulled the classic, I killed a dog joke that we all know and love, man. I love that joke, which I personally think she made up the fact that it was a joke. Uh, but anyway, fuck yeah, this I person. Agree. Let's head on to the next one. Staten Slot. Reshetnyak, aka Trash Vlogger Reflay. Back in 2020, a Russian vlogger did a really dumb thing on a live stream and would soon after get six years in jail for it. Yes, Popularly I know this one. That's sad. Vlogger, real name Statinslav Reshetnikov. This 30 year old thought it was wise to inflict abuse on his girlfriend live on stream for the entertainment of his viewers. The setup was that his viewers were donating to him to inflict verbal and physical violence on her, and I guess that the more money that came in, the more she suffered. Don't quote me on that though, but this really does sound like a red room. Reports say that he called her names like Smelly and Prostitute. Now, apparently at one point, he locked her outside with barely any clothes on in sub-zero temperatures. She only had underwear on. Now, unfortunately, when Reshetnikov was going to let her back into the house, she was already dead. Carrying her inside and while streaming, he says, My bunny, what's up with you? Before saying, Guys, no pulse. She's pale. She is not breathing. Most people actually assume she died from freezing to death, but the investigations revealed an interesting turn. Apparently, Reshetnikov had hit her earlier that day, which he admitted to, and he hit her really hard on the head, which was actually the cause of death. But no. I'm sure being in the cold didn't do her any better. I don't yeah. know how sick the viewers were on the live stream because even though it was evident that she had died, no one cared to call emergency services. We've seen a lot of cases with Twitch being relevant where the chat does call 911 mm -hmm. or something along the lines, like they get the info out, but I have no idea what type of community this guy was growing for all of them to just, you know, keep it on the keep it on the down low and not snitch. Anyway, medics pronounced her dead, and later an autopsy showed that she had craniocerebral trauma and multiple bruising on the face and hemorrhage of soft tissues. For his actions, he got arrested and was charged with intentional Good. infliction of grievous bodily harm, dangerous to human life, committed with the use of an object used as a weapon, resulting in the death of a victim by negligence. An interesting bit of information that I found on this case is that during the trial period, his mother was quoted saying that he wouldn't hurt a kitten and was very kind. Yeah, he seemed really kind. As the sentencing was in 2021, it could be that this dude remains in jail for quite some time. But just how long, you may ask? This cunt was only given six years. Yup, he'll be a free man wow. in 2027. That's you a bummer. That wow. Six years is definitely not enough. That's that's brutal. I didn't know how long his sentence was. Oh, let's finish yeah, this out. Like. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we're trying out a new angle, which I think I'm going to keep. It's just a lot easier for me. And before the video ends, I, I like your angle. tell you guys about my new sponsor, Gamer Subs. It's an amazing energy. 
Aww. Yeah, that was a that was an interesting one. I think, yeah, I think anyone can ruin their lives in seconds. And I think it's really easy when you're live streaming and it just, it's all clipped. It's all evidence. And it's, I don't know. I know stuff can get deleted, but man, people save those clips. They get... That is forever. Yeah, it's it's almost like a good way to just like show those who are just so messed up. You know what I mean? Like you can't you can't hide it all forever. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I wonder if that's why a lot of the people I watch are like pretty wholesome, pretty nice, kind, or like just like ridiculously funny. You're just I don't know. I think I just I think I know the type of people I'm looking for. There's a lot that I'll click on and I'm like, nope. Nope, this is not the vibe. This is not it. Like, I almost get creeped out in some. I don't know. I don't know if you guys feel that way too when you're looking through live streams. I don't know. Kind of different. Kind of interesting. But I think that was that was that was a really interesting one. There's a besides the last one, I haven't heard of any of the oh no. Besides the last one and the TikTok guy, I haven't seen I haven't seen many any any of these other ones so that was that was interesting to me hopefully interesting to you as well yeah i thought we would just check this out yeah streaming such a strange strange phenomenon is that right i don't know if that's the right way to put it but i feel like it came out of nowhere and now it's just so huge and so captivating that like it's you, know, you never know what you're gonna see or find like it's it's wild out there but thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for hanging out. I had a blast. It's a it was an interesting topic to me. So thanks for thanks for seeing it through with me. If you made it to the end, uh, comments. Uh, let's do a banana. Yeah, put a banana emoji in the chat, and it'll be funny. It'll be our little secret. All the love. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you guys stay safe, be good, and I will see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.